You're watching Adorithms Biology and I'm your host and friend Dr. Zubair Shani. Today the topic of my talk is Enzyme Kinetics. So far the journey of enzymes has been very exciting. We have gone through the discovery of enzymes followed by the way the enzymes work followed by their properties and their classification. Today we are taking a next step forward and now we'll talk about enzyme kinetics. So let's begin. I will start with a question. What is enzyme kinetics? The word kinetics means which has something to do with the moving object. Whatever moves we decipher it or we correlate it with kinetics. So what has enzymes to do with the kinetics? As we talked in the previous lecture, the enzymes are the biocatalysts. Biocatalysts in the sense that they increase the rate of the reaction without getting used up in the reaction, without changing the equilibrium of the, uh, the reaction. So when we talk about enzyme kinetics now, we are talking about the rate. Very important term we will start with is the rate itself. Anything Wherever we correlate anything with time, we have to call it as a rate. For example, when we talk about velocity, in physics we, descri we describe velocity as distance traveled by a in a particular time period. So if you are covering more distance, distance in a lesser time, it means you have a good velocity. In case of enzymes or enzyme catalyzed reactions we also have a term called as velocity so we have the terms v0 that's initial velocity then we also have some terms which most of the time confuse the students or they don't understand it well so let me first put on the terminology and then we will go into the proper discussion so now you understand the initial velocity v you have to also deal with a term called as v max that is the maximum velocity and what is maximum velocity it is the ability of an enzyme to convert most of the substrate into the product in a very short time that's the maximum velocity the maximum efficiency an enzyme can have now one of the term that is correlated with enzyme efficiency is we we call it as km km michaelis menten equation so it is a part of michaelis menten equation and we call this as michaelis constant okay we call this as michaelis constant now so now we are done with the terms that is the initial velocity the maximum velocity and the Michaelis constant. Now let us understand it in a practical manner. Let us consider that we have three vessels and each of the vessels have the concentration of the substrate in the increasing order. So let us say we have one, two, three substrates here, more than one, two, three, four, five substrates here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven substrates here. Okay. Let us now put, down, put in this beaker the enzymes in a constant manner. So we have only the single enzyme present in each. So what's going to happen is the substrate is going to bind to the enzyme's active site. And once the active site is saturated, no more substrate can bind to it. So what we can say is if we draw a graph between the substrate concentration versus the initial velocity what are we going to see so as you go on increasing the concentration of the substrate the velocity or the rate or the enzyme efficiency is going to increase and more products are going to be formed so it sh it, sh it will be a straight line like this so but as you keep on concentrating as you keep on increasing the concentration of the substrate a point will come where there will be no more increase in the velocity of the reaction so when we talk about this initial velocity that is v0 it will reach a 
place we called as v max v max so what is v max now v max is the maximum velocity an enzyme can achieve okay so as you keep on increasing the substrate concentration the velocity is going to increase but at a point where the saturation point reaches there is no more place where the substrate can bind but yes you can still increase the efficiency of the enzyme by putting in more enzymes putting in more enzymes in these beakers or in these experimental tubes so more the enzyme we can have an increased vmax so the vmax instead of coming here it can come over here so vmax can now increase only if you increase the concentration of the enzymes now this being said we have a very important term to deal with that is km we have the substrate we know about the substrate we know about the initial velocity we know about the vmax now the term which is a little bit tricky to understand here is is the km that's the michaelis constant so as per the textbook definition they say that km is nothing but it is a substrate concentration so it's nothing but a substrate concentration but what we had different concentration of this substrate if we start from zero here and end with say hendron here how do we know at which point is the km at what is the value of that km so we say that km is a substrate concentration okay so it is here let let it be for example say 36 so let the value of the km be 36 so it is the substrate concentration at which the velocity reaches half of the v max so veloc initial velocity reaches the half of the v max so you plot it always you plot the km substrate concentration on the x axis so this is your x axis and this is your y axis so now and try to understand km which most of the students have faced difficulty in so if i say if i decrease the km for example if i decrease it from 36 to say 25 so i will get my vmax right over here i will get my km right over here so this is my km now so what does the km indicates it means that if you have a lesser value of km the more will be the initial the it will take less time for a reaction to reach the half of the maximum velocity if you increase the value of km for example from 36 to say 50 it means it will take more time it will take more time for a reaction to reach its maximum velocity so always remember this lesser the value of the km the better is the velocity and the better is the efficiency of an enzyme fine so you when you look at this graph now what do you call it we call this as hyperbola hyperbola so what is happening the velocity is increasing but as it the substrate concentration is getting as the enzymes are getting saturated it's plateaus down so the, no matter how much substrate concentration now you increase there won't be any increase in the velocity of the reaction now it was michaelis and menten who tried to put this into an equation and that equation simply tells us that initial velocity has the ability to reach its maximum velocity depending upon its concentration of the substrate divided by Michaelis constant plus the substrate concentration so let me make you understand what this reaction is all about so if you consider as the value of km decreases if it is so low that you consider it this km as negligible so what will you find the substrate substrate will go out down and the initial velocity will reach the maximum velocity that's why i said that the lesser you keep the lesser the value of the km for a particular enzyme the lesser oh i can say sorry 
the better is the velocity and better is the efficiency of the enzyme now km km as i told you it has to do something with substrate concentration but next important point is km has also to do something with the active site of the enzyme now let, let me make you understand it in a different way so if i am trying to say that if you have this Michaelis-Menten equation now I will provide you a formula which you will not find it any in any textbooks okay but it will help you to calculate Vmax or KMO for any particular reaction because you will be asked in, in the competitive exams about the values of Vmax and the values of KM so let me show you here so if we are talking about the active site of the enzyme so let us say this is the active site of the enzyme we also have another enzyme here okay again we have this active site here the rest of the enzyme is like this now look at the substrate the substrate here is circular and the substrate here is a perfect triangle okay it's a perfect triangle so which of them has more affinity to bind with the active site so we are talking about the affinity affinity of active site as i will denote for active site affinity of active site for its substrate okay what i'm trying to teach you here is how can you correlate KM. you have been correlating km with substrate concentration fine it is the concentration of the substrate where the velocity reaches half of the vmax okay this is it de one definition another thing that is km is dependent on is affinity of active side that is this side that is this side for the substrate so if i ask you a question which of the ends which of the active side has more affinity for the substrate enzyme number one or enzyme number two so definitely you will tell that it's enzyme two because it is a hand in glove this triangle is perfectly fixing into the active side but the circle can't fit in okay so you can say now let us talk about this enzyme number one so this km now it's inversely proportional to the efficiency of the enzyme and that is telling us about the vmax so remember you will be asked for two terms what is happening to the Vmax and what is happening to the Km. So let us take the first case. This is case number one. And let us say it is a case number two. Now what is happening in this case one? The affinity of the active site for the substrate is very low. So I can write it is low. So when it is low, it means Km is high. And when KM is high, it means efficiency because it's inversely proportional. Efficiency goes down and Vmax also goes down. So when there is no fit hand in glove fitting of substrate to the active site, you will see that the KM is increasing. So KM is becoming more in value. So the efficiency of the enzyme is decreasing and it is very difficult for an enzyme to reach its maximum velocity because the substrate is not fitting in properly. Now let us take this case to where the substrate fits perfectly into the active side. So the affinity of the active side for the substrate in this case, in this case it is high, okay. In this case the affinity of the substrate is high. To bind to the active side so km is less for example as i told in the previous example ks is decreasing from 36 to 25 so more efficient is the enzyme and it is very easy for the initial velocity of an enzyme to achieve its maximum velocity that is the full potential of the enzyme so if you remember this formula this formula is only this much and if you remember this formula you will be able to definitely identify what is happening to the km and what is happening to the vmax when we go to the next chapter that is enzyme inhibition okay so this being said 
We can calculate the values of Km and Vmax in a Michaelis Menten equation in a hyperbolic graph. Now, people started researching that is there any other method where the calculation becomes more easy? So now, next plot came in. It's called as Line Weaver Burke or Line Weaver Burke recipro double reciprocal plot. Let us see what it is. How we can find the KM and how we can find the Vmax in that graph. So let us move to the next part. The next part deals with Line Weaver Burke equation. So how we can achieve this line weaver burke equation or how you can remember it when if, if it is just asked what is the line weaver burke equation. So if you, you have to remember only one, that's the michaelis menten equation, you can decipher from that the line weaver equation. Let me show you how. So if we have this equation that initial velocity may reach to maximum velocity multiplied by, I will represent it by a dot, multiplied by the substrate concentration and then we have the Km, that's the Michaelis, Michaelis constant plus substrate concentration. Okay, now try to do, try to, try to put the equation upside down. Okay, so here we can find it, it's like 1 by V0 is equal to Km plus the substrate concentration. Okay, divide by Vmax multiply by substrate concentration okay the equation is not yet complete let us now what we do is we we have the numerator and then we have the denominator so what we will find is we will differentiate them and we will divide the equation on the basis of this plus sign so what we'll do one equation to be like this it will take this part into consideration and another equation will take this part into concentration so let me put it here so that you can understand it okay so let me put it here now on the top so now this equation will be converting into the this equation so 1 by v0 is equal to say km divide by v max multiply by substrate concentration the plus sign is now here so it is substrate concentration divided by Vmax into substrate concentration. Now look here in the equation. What is happening? The substrate and substrate will go down, out, out. Now let me take the equation further. So what we have now in the equation left is 1 by V0, 1 by v0 initial velocity is equal to 1 by v max that is i am talking about this portion plus now we have km divided by v max multiplied by 1 by substrate concentration i am doing nothing i am just rearranging the equation so that i can correlate it with an algebraic equation for a straight line that is c y is equal to c plus m x so what is y referring to it is referring to the 1 by v0 is intercepting on the y axis c 1 by c 1 by v, v, v max is intercepting i will show you in the graph m stands for the slope this is the slope and x stands for 1 by half of the concentration so this is your line weaver burke equation okay line weaver line weaver burke equation very easy so you have now learned how to decipher the line weaver burke equation from the michaelis menten equation it's very easy you don't have to just it's just a simple mathematics now let me plot this equation in a graph so that you can see why does km stand and why does vmax stand because always we have to do something with vmax or km so let me plot this equation now for you so 
the equation now stands is let us make a plot out of it now so now we are plotting again we had to plot on x-axis the substrate and y-axis is the initial velocity so here I will put I will first write the equation and then I will plot it to show you how it how you can plot it in a straight line okay so let, let us consider that this is a graph a straight line graph and this is your straight line okay so it is intercepting at two points one point is this and one point is this okay so here let me now if we are converting this uh, equation it is 1 by v0 is equal to 1 by v max plus km by v max multiply by 1 by concentration of the substrate so let us plot this now here so you are using 1 by this 1 by this is your equation okay so I'll just try to keep the graph a little bit away from the equation so that you can understand it well okay fine okay now we have to plot this we have to plot the velocity with respect to substrate concentration so we will put it like this so we have this values now we have 1 is to substrate concentration that is this value then we'll plot it against the initial velocity so it will be like this 1 by 1 by initial velocity now you can see that there are two intercepts one is this and one is this so we call this intercept as 1 by v max if you write the equation of a straight line c is equal to uh, y plus m x so you consider this as m that is the slope of the equation the x stands for the concentration of the substrate the y stands for the 1 by v max so you had to plot y always we had to plot it on y axis and x on the x axis so we are putting this x here so we are plotting 1 by substrate versus 1 by vo now you find that there is a slope in the equation this is like this so what is the slope of the equation the slope is m so m stands for km by vx so you write it like this km by v max now this intercept it stands for because it's plotted on the y-axis it stands for 1 by v max and the y x intercept finally we have to plot the km so we'll say 1 1 divided by km so now it says straight line and that's the line weaver's work equation it always talks about the straight line so now you can decipher the value of km and you can decipher the value of the Vmax and this is the slope of the equation now once you have learned about how to convert the Michaelis Minton equation in Michaelis Minton hyperbolic equation into line weaver Berg double reciprocal plot because we are we are changing we are flipping not only this side of the equation but we are also flipping the this side of the equation so that's why we call it as line weaver Berg double reciprocal plot now you are able to draw it next lecture we'll be talking about the same equations and same graphs but we will talk about at that case when inhibitors are present what happens to the km so we'll be talking that into the next lecture until then if you have any questions regarding this topic please provide your comments below provide your feedbacks and please do subscribe my channel so that you can get the latest updates when I upload the next lecture on in the series. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Goodbye.